And we're back. And you are listening to Villain Cast, BJJ Antiheroes, with myself, Chris the Villain Pains. And welcome to a solitary edition of Reap the Week. But first, a quick thank you to our members at In Theory BJJ, Concept Driven Jiu Jitsu. For fight commentary, technique and concept videos, private coaching, monthly webinars, and QA sessions, please visit www patreon.com slash in theory bjj so as you may have noticed this is just myself this week um scheduling conflicts uh just meant that uh yeah it's it's me recording the reap the week hopefully knack will be back next week uh i am recording this just before i head off to switzerland to go see joker jiu-jitsu um good friends over there christian matisse um Always excited to go see them, excited to go see the uh, the everyone at the gym. But questions have come in, the uh, the mailbag is half full, and I couldn't wait a week. So here we are, we're going to be doing a rundown of the questions that have been sent in via Instagram. Thank you for filling those out. Uh, the Discord is still going, people are still talking on there, so please get on there as well and send in uh, ideas for, for videos, for for questions on Reap the Week, for podcast guests, I'm always interested to to hear what you guys have to say. So the first question uh, this week for the uh, Reap the Week is ideas on beating the half butterfly hook or elevators in general. So when it comes to um, guard passing and uh, initial kind of concepts for getting around it is... You're going to have um, first part of it is is inside outside theory, um, and that is, are they in between your legs or are they around you with their legs? So, such as a outside base guard would be close guard or delaheva because the person on the bottom, their legs are around the person on top, whilst butterfly guard and single leg X are guards where you're in between the other person's legs. Uh, half butterfly um, and half guard. I actually, I, there's a reason I play. I prefer actually playing half guard. I think half guard is actually quite a complex guard and is a guard where you're kind of robbing yourself if you don't in- incorporate legs because half guard is both. I have an inside leg and have an outside leg. Uh, with my inside leg, that means I can do leg locks. With my outside legs, I can do outside leg. I can do upper body attacks. Um, this is kind of a critical bit of, of jiu-jitsu information that should be kind of given from from very early on in your jiu-jitsu career because that will inform, again, what is, you are vulnerable to and what you are capable of when it comes to submissions. If I am... This, like I say, it's, it's not black and white. There's, there's definitely outlying techniques. But if I am in between someone's legs... So they are in close guard, for example. I'm not necessarily worrying about them going for heel hooks or or leg entanglements on me. They may invert. Again, there's outliers. But they're going for upper body attacks. So I need to be hyper aware of my shoulders, for example. Um, At the same time, if someone is in between my legs, so they're playing butterfly or something similar, I have to be worried about my legs more than my arms or my head. True, it's not to say that they aren't vulnerable in a way, but I can kind of pass. They can't really hold on to me whilst they have a, a guillotine grip and a, a butterfly. I can kind of maybe hop their legs. They have to go around to kind of block me. They have to go back to being outside. Um, so when you're looking at passing a half butterfly or a half guard, there's both at play. There's a opportunity for that person to expose your legs and go for a leg entanglement and there's also opportunity for them to maybe go for a guillotine and upper body attack and block your ability to to pass over so that's the first part is it's it's a more dangerous situation because you are fully vulnerable to all submissions you're not just having to look out for one side or the other um that would make the half butterfly a little bit more difficult to deal with but at the same time you have to then consider that if someone is in a outside base guard or a half outside base guard, 
they have a leg available for you to attack. Um, JJ Pages, uh, shout out to to JJ over in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Tempe, Tempe, sorry, my bad. Um, he made a really good point of, I, I was at the Globetrotters camp out there a couple of years ago, where if I can get a, your foot to my hip, there's a leg lock available. And if you're considering like a, a half butterfly sweep, there's a leg near your hip. And if you're if you're of the kind of mentality that you would not go for leg locks, uh, you're robbing yourself. Like you, it's the same as like I say if you're if you're playing half guard or like top half, and all you try and do is pass. Like they are literally leaving a leg out for you to leg lock. Like you should be able to threaten both. There's a jab cross element to this. You should be able to look at on the one side, yeah, threatening the pass. On the other side, threatening a leg lock. There have there has to be multiple threat. Um, same with with half butterfly. If you're just sitting there thinking, "Well, I need to pass," and ignoring the leg. Well, one could set up the other. If you're threatening their leg, they're not going to be thinking of the pass. Same as if you're threatening a pass, they're not going to be thinking about the leg. So first port of call when it comes to attacking uh, or sawing in half butterfly, are you actually attacking their legs as well? And are you fully aware of what you are exposed to? Um, It's a bit of a Wild West situation. After that, again, all guards come down to the same... Uh, idea of when it comes to passing I need to get past your knee I need to get over your kneecap Uh, I don't give a shit how it happens Um, I either need to go over it, under it, around it or through it and as long as it kind of fits that criteria um, that makes the most sense and you can't really prescribe a pass in such chaos it's always going to be the same thing, though. I have to go over, under, around, or through, depending on what they move. And you can add more motion and threat when you start including legs in this and start including leg locks. Or just the threat of leg locks. So definitely work on your legs if you want to look at passing half butterfly. Next question. Oh, it's a shame Naki isn't here. I like bouncing ideas off him. Anyway. Uh, would I consider giving feedback for roles on, in theory, BJJ? Absolutely. Um, yes, send me roles, send me competition footage. Uh, some people are sending me uh, video footage of various competitions. I do uh, smart breakdowns and commentary on those. So absolutely send them in. I, I like doing those things. I like looking at what people are doing and commenting on what elite people are doing and also I love breaking down roles in general I mean uh, so I, I do this I do jiu-jitsu pretty much all day every day now um, so I, I this is this is my life and I do a lot of privates I do a lot of one-to-one sessions uh, people do travel in for them and I either watch them roll with other people, when if they come as a pair, for example, or I roll with them. And then I can uh, figure out very quickly what, what issues uh, uh, people are kind of approaching. I can, you know, kind of feed various input in. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, I get a lot of experience with this, uh, and I, I do enjoy doing it. It's, it's essentially what I do every day. So please send me your footage in on In Theory BJJ. I would very happily do breakdowns and obviously – with everyone's um, go ahead, I would enjoy then posting those for other people to watch as long as you consent. Speaking of in theory, plug, 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 <laughs> uh, we did a webinar at the weekend. Uh, that is available in theory. Uh, we're looking at maybe at least one, but maybe two webinars a month. Uh, they're interactive. So I post the time beforehand, I post the YouTube live link to the in theory, Patreon, and then people can come on board. They can ask questions during the webinar. Um, you can vote on what webinars you want to do in the future. The Q and A sessions are just completely interactive. You ask questions, and I'll answer them there and then in the gym. So, if you're interested in that, like, please check out In Theory, um, the www.patreon.com/slash/InTheoryBJJ. There's also technique videos on there. I'm creating a library. Uh, there's fight breakdowns um and what's it like ten dollars a month nothing nothing it's a cheap subscription um and you pretty much get me at your beck and call 
um, next question. Using lapels for control, top and bottom in the gi. So weirdly enough, uh, I prefer no gi when it comes to training and sparring and competing. But I do better in the gi, frustratingly. Um, and as a few, I, I, I enjoy the, the concept of the gi and how it marries up to no gi. I don't necessarily teach them separately. Um, there's always obviously some things you can do in the gi, you can't do in no gi. But I think jiu-jitsu concepts have to be universal. Uh, there's only certain ways of controlling the human body. It's physics and physiology. So if the idea works in no gi, it should work in the gi and, and vice versa if you understand what it is you're doing. So when it comes to using lapels, Keenan Cornelius uh, said it really well in the seminar that he did. Oh, shit, 10 years ago. That's made me feel old. Um, it was on Worm Guard, and I was a, I think a blue belt at the time. And one thing he said is you've got to see how the, the lapel, when you wrap it through someone's leg and you, you take the Worm Guard, is the extension of it and how it reaches around to the opposing shoulder. And you're controlling not just like just their body, you're controlling all the wraparound to their opposing shoulder and limiting their, their motion and tying it to their leg. And essentially you're, you're creating cradles in that way you're creating extensions of your own arm and creating cradles and so i know naki when we roll in the gi which by and large we actually roll in the gi currently more than no gi i think it's just because it's cold um we essentially are creating cradles all the time as how we can can we tie the upper body to the lower body and restrict someone's motion using the gi as an extension of our own arm and as a no-gi person, as a teaching predominantly no-gi and then people moving into the gi over time, I'd say that is one of the main issues that people have is they end up fighting the jacket and not the person when the ideas of jiu-jitsu should, again, be universal. They should apply to both. Um, and the second you start seeing the gi as an extension of your own hand in your own body uh, so one of my other favorite ones if I'm, I'm holding someone from the side or if I'm passing half guard is to pass the lapel underneath the shoulder but I do that anyway I'd want to con I'd imagine wrapping my hand deeper into their armpit I can't because my arms are of a certain length I can't grow them but that the, the gi allows me to get a further extension on that um again I've tried to do this as an in theory seminar maybe I can put it in as a a bit of a Q&A session, just slip it in there, or maybe just a general video. But I'm very fascinated about how certain points on the gi have certain tensile areas, they get tight in certain areas, they control in certain ways. I love breaking that down. I love uh, feeding back in those ideas, like there's certain points of the lapel that are super tight, and there's ways you grab for, for collar grips and, and gi grips and chokes, and... I'd very much be interested in setting those videos up. It's very hard to show from here. Uh, it's a podcast. There is a YouTube video. Um, high definition one. I can understand why people use makeup now in shows. Um, I don't. <laughs> Speaking of, again, ideas on training and jujitsu. Uh, I did allude to this previously. Uh, if you still listen to this podcast. Um I should have said this earlier. Uh, there is a camp now. Uh, it's in the beginning of April. Oh, I can't remember the weekend. It's like the 10th or something. I need to double check. I'm there. Uh, it's an eco versus the world camp. And it's in Florence, Italy. I'm just, I love Florence. So it's going to be a, uh, my good friend, uh, Mario, uh, Mario's gym. Um, Centurion, Mars, the same gym. Uh, I love them. I've been going there since 2019. Um, I recently went there tail end of, of last year, 2023, as a I think my third time, maybe, maybe fourth. I love going out there. They're, they're a really cool bunch, uh, really great vibe in the gym. Mario's a great coach. He's got great students. And this is where we're going to be holding this camp, and it'll be Preet Michelson, um, obviously, uh, Francesco Fonte, uh, Ed Ingemills from the UK, uh, myself, and a surprise, surprise coach maybe. Um, some details have been finalised, but 
a surprise coach. Uh, I'll be posting these details on uh, my Instagram, so check that out if you're interested. It's the Ecovus World Camp, uh, beginning of April in Florence. Um, it's going to be a tough camp. It's going to be an interesting camp. It's going to be a, a lot of a lot of heavy content there. Um, it's over three days. I think it's a Friday to a Sunday. Uh, yeah, and what a, what a beautiful place to be in. I highly recommend just visiting Florence in general. Um, so when you're not at the camp, just go go try. Oh, I was there. Oh my lord, I was there in in December and yeah, that that Florence wine, man. They 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 uh that just that stuff just flowed and yeah, I I was I don't drink much at all ever. Um not in a long time and yeah, you know, when you're around Italians, they they know their food. They there's good food and there's there's good wine and yeah, it's it just flows out there. The wine's so cheap and it's just so good. So if you're interested in visiting, I highly recommend coming to this camp. It's just gonna be a, a a a great great content, great coaches, and great vibes. So check that out. It's you'll find it on Facebook, Eco vs. the World, uh, BJJ, and it's in Florence in April. Uh, anyway, getting back to the questions, uh, the mailbag. Oh, here we go. Someone asked, how do you defend against everything? <sighs> so, <laughs> um, it's kind of a funny one. Like, I, I feel like uh, it frustrated me for a period of time in that the, I had a video go viral for five years ago. What? Why is it five years? Um and it's always hard to replicate virality. Um, I've been trying. I've been hoping my my subsequent content has been just as interesting. Um, it hasn't, but I can always keep going back to that video. Uh, I think someone said, I watched a YouTube video recently, um, and it said, consistency will always beat virality because you can never rely on virality. It only happens once. If it ever does, it's like lightning just striking uh but consistency will always build and i was like i like that i don't feel as heartbroken anymore <laughs> just opening myself up on this podcast um anyway how do you defend against everything so i made that class at the estonia camp five years ago 2019 and my understanding of jiu-jitsu has changed in five years as it should because most people can even go from white belt to maybe even brown belt in five years. So if I can't get better as a black belt in five years, then then what the hell am I doing? Um, so back then, my understanding of how to defend everything was I need to deny people access to my body. And the crux of that video was showing how to deny people access to the body using running man, using pre-turtle, and shutting my elbows down into my hips. And that was enough. Just that little bit of knowledge there. It's created great feedback over the years. And it does it does work. It, it, one of the, the fun... I still use a little bit of that to an extent. Because of traveling so much, I go to a lot of gyms. And because I'm famous on this defending everything, people want to beat the shit out of me. And I'm getting older. I'm 30, coming up to 37 uh, soon. And I've been training now for 15 years. Um, been in martial arts for... How old am I? 24 years. Been doing combat sports for... 20 years. Uh, so I'm feeling old. I'm feeling a bit tired. And when you've now set that that message out there that you can defend everything, people want to prove that. And... Being able to then choose the the pace of the role by shutting things down is is such a lifesaver. It means I can travel, I can feel safe, I don't have to feel as broken anymore. I can choose, you know, if someone wants to go crazy on me, like if I'm if someone doesn't want to have that kind of fun role and they just want to go a bit nuts, I can go, cool, I'm shut this I'll shut this role down. It doesn't matter. Um I don't really give a shit. Like I'm here to play, not to win. Um winning's fun, but I wanna be able to train longer. Uh but my understanding of jiu-jitsu now has changed a little bit further past that. It's not to say it's wrong, just I know better. And 
again, I, I keep mentioning it. There's a book coming. It takes time when there's so much jiu-jitsu on the road. Um, and the main thing I keep coming back to is this, this image of a bonsai tree where the upper leaves of the branches... I like bonsai trees. Maybe that's why. Upper leaves of the branches are all the individual techniques you have in jiu-jitsu where... If I was to cut a leaf off a branch, that could be like a rear naked choke defense. Like fantastic, We're not you know that leaf is gone, and the way of training that is very different. It's a very detail oriented. You've got a small set of scissors, um, but your back is still being taken. That branch still exists, and there's all those other leaves on that branch. But if we kill the branch, we chop the branch down. All those leaves die. So we try and stop people taking their back. Uh, we keep going further down the tree. We now have where all the branches are coming from. That could be your guard retention. If you can't get past your guard, there's no positions. There's no positions. There's no submissions. So, again, it just changes how much time you spend on different situations. Then you go further down the tree. And so you go all the way down to the bottom. And that's don't go fall over. Stay upright. Stay standing. Um, If you can't get taken to the ground, jiu-jitsu don't work. If you can't have your posture broken, jiu-jitsu don't work. So that's where I then focus most of my time. It seems, again, very reductive and dumb to say out loud because it kind of destroys the game. Don't fall over. Um, but then you, you informs how I then spend most of my time training things. Like, I don't want people to pass my guard. They do pass my guard. Again, why? what is a guard pass? And we did this um, during the webinar. So, spoilers. <laughs> Um, it's still available to watch. It always be available to watch. All the webinars we do are right there on In Theory. Um, so does Dan Herb. They all said it. Is you attack the periphery, you attack the arms and legs, you get past the knees and elbows. Why? Because you want to gain access to center mass. You want to gain access to the spine. Once you've gained access to the spine, the center mass, you isolate it. Once you have isolated it, you go back to attacking the head and the limbs. That is everything you've ever done in jiu-jitsu ever. Um, so even further down, then, this is the roots now, is that if I want to defend everything, don't let people get anywhere near your body. Have good hand fighting. Um, and we go into good detail on the hand fighting. I'm going to make a video. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm off the Joker this week. And I actually intend to teach it there. So I'll record this class and I'll put it up as an as a extra video. Uh, so look out for that on In Theory. But it's, it's the ideas of hand fighting. And frustratingly and I'm guilty of this and I I regret not going further into the details of this but what is hand fighting like how do you become successful at hand fighting you have the ideas of hand fighting like arm drags two on ones etc but what is hand what constitutes a win in hand fighting and why do we even do it um and you can say this one you have to get better at hand fighting but how so what? Okay, cool. Thanks for the thanks for the help there. Like, what do you want to do to get better? Um, and I like the explanation we have, and it's the same as guard passing. Um, is we're trying to gain access past the elbows or past the knees to gain access to center mass. So that's step one. Is you know you have to beat my hand fighting. If you can't beat my hand fighting. You're not going to get anywhere near me. Take me down. If you take me down, well, I need to try and keep my balance. I then got guard. You then need to get past my knees. If you can't get past my knees, that's a secondary form of like hand fighting. Then you get an access to center mass, but I can block that. Just because you've got past my el- knees and elbows, I can kind of block into my body. Then we have all the prepositions that were featured in that video five years ago. If you somehow manage to gain access to my center mass and isolate my spine, bit of a problem. Now you're going to start isolating my upper joints, my shoulders and my hips to start, or my neck. But we'll say shoulders and hips are now to start attacking my limbs for joint submissions. So I need to clear those upper joints. If you somehow latch onto them super tight, then I'm toast. Then things get broken. Um, but if I had to dial back how to defend everything again, it, it's always improving. Um, you know, it's... It's hand fighting and balance. Bread and butter right there. If you don't want bad things to happen to you, understand those things. And uh, like I said, we'll put a video up of the seminar I'm doing in Joker. Um, 
I'll record it live and uh, I should be able to post it while I'm out there. So expect that this week on In Theory. Uh, final question. Getting past flexible guards. This kind of goes back into what I was just saying. So I like this as kind of uh, featured. So keeping my, my stance where I'm standing of keeping my body defended with my hands there's various ways of doing it if I understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. But for me to attack, I have to expose, which leaves me open. Same as boxing, I can cover my chin and my body, but if I want to punch, I have to expose. Same as guard, is that if someone's got a really tight, Buddha guard, I think that was the initial question, um, they can't attack. Like, they have to be able to expose. Um, and again, this is like... Uh, part of the game of jiu-jitsu about making someone desperate because it's a strategy in combat sports is if you have super tight defense and someone wants to play the game they will become more violent and make more gaps which makes it easier for someone playing that kind of hyper defensive game but if they're on their ass in guard you're winning you're on top if this involves strikes you'll be kicking them to death um so cool you don't want to play i don't want to play either if you want to be a dick but um, they have to expose to be able to attack and when they start exposing that's when you can then start laying in with whatever attacks you want and again anytime they want to get a guard and they want to wrap around you in some way they have to extend out they can't remain in their little buddha guard forever they have to be able to extend out and expose their knees and it's the same again they're trying to grab you with their arms and legs deny them because they're trying to get past your arms and legs to gain access to your center mass and your and control you in various ways you have to deny that and then find ways past their arms their near knees and elbows over under round and through um and that is that is the game we're playing like even guard as a person in guard and person upright it's still a hand fighting game and so if you're having difficulty getting past guards in general understand what it constitutes as hand fighting and what constitutes as, as access to center mass it's not just Oh, get past the legs. Oh, get past the arms. Yeah, but what's what's the concept that allows me to do it? Like, explain it so I can work on it. Don't just do it or just drill various ideas. Like I say, going for a, an arm drag and drilling arm drags is fantastic. Did it in wrestling forever. Um, but why am I arm dragging? Why is that win? What's the concept behind it? Um, and, you know spoilers again is i need past your elbows and so i'm gonna flank them that's what an arm drag is i'm finding a way of flanking your elbow to gain access to your center mass doesn't matter how you do it two on ones uh russian tie-ups arm drags i just need to flank your elbow that's all i give a shit about flanking your your forearm doesn't do anything flanking your elbow does um and so again, like, I wish I had that explained to me because I've tried. I've been spending years trying to drag people arms, but why? It wasn't fully explained. Like, okay, yeah, I was dragging, but why is it sometimes working, sometimes not? But as soon as I understand that, I'm trying to flank the elbow. It doesn't matter how I do the drag. I'm just moving it the fuck out of the way so I can get around it. And all of a sudden, I'm taking backs left, right, and center for, from standing. I'm like, cool. I understand this now. Um, we're going to go deeper on in theory and. Oh, I said it's already done the webinar, so you can go and check that out. But it's an hour long video, so I'll do a, a clip of it. Um, but yes, yeah, so strategies for hand fighting and how to improve upon that. And it should be part of all of your training. Um, again, the idea carries straight into guard. Guard is essentially using your feet like hands. Um, that's all, again, one of the criteria for a good jiu jitsu player is how much do they use their feet like hands or how wooden are they? If they're really wooden with their guard, they're not a really good jiu jitsu player. But someone who's quite flexible and has high dexterity with their uh, feet and legs, that's decent guard. Um, so the rules still apply. That you're using your feet like hands and I need to get access to center mass. How do I do it? Um, oh. Yeah, I wish Naki was here. Uh, thank you for joining in uh, for this uh, solitary version of Reap the Week. I couldn't let these, these questions go an extra one. Um, like I said, check, uh, check out the Eco versus the World Camp with Pre, Francesco, myself, Ed Ingemills, and special guest in Florence, Italy in April. Um, 
What else is happening? Uh, numerous seminars if you want to come catch me live and I'm open to traveling so if you want me to, to come visit and want me to say hello just drop me a message drop me a message in general I love talking to people uh, check out www.patreon.com slash in theory bjj uh, the YouTube channel still going I still keep uploading hopefully like interesting classes from, from fighting fit my gym and yeah hopefully next week we'll have Naki back so send in your questions this has been Reap the Week. <laughs>